Hi guys, I have come today with a digital marketing basics discussion on what is digital marketing and what are the key matrices which any company currently tracks to do the digital marketing channel, the performance and the part of it. Digital marketing, as we all know, is the bread and butter and the tool used by most of the companies to push their product through digital channels. So when I call it digital channel, the digital channel means the product being pushed through the Google search engine, through Meta, which encompasses Facebook and Instagram, YouTubes of the world, and other channels like Microsoft Bing. Most of the companies are currently heavily reliant on the digital marketing strategies to push their product in the general public and forum. What I've done is, I have presented a quick slide on what are the key digital marketing matrices which any company currently caters and checks and measures on a day-to-day -day basis to take informed decisions. So I will quickly jump on to the presentation on digital marketing basics. So as I've su summarized earlier, Digital marketing is very important in making data-driven decision-making. The companies follow a quick set of matrices, and there can be more. But what I have done is I have put a presentation on the very important and specific ones, which most of the companies currently use to make informed decisions in and around their digital marketing campaigns. The first one is to understand what are the traffic sources currently? The traffic sources can something which encompasses people coming through the direct organic search. Now, for example, if I am wanting to purchase a shoe of Nike, I can directly go to the website of Nike, purchase a shoe, make the payment and get the shoe. What happens in this case? It's a pure organic channel. It's a, it's a clear, branding which nike has done attracted me i went onto the page and got the shoes in my portfolio the second thing is the social media the social media comprises of the google the facebook the instagram the youtube so the traffic coming to these pages is called social media traffic now the third thing is me directly going to the website of nike and directly purchasing a shoe is called the direct channel if I go to Google, type Nike, and then go to the website, it's called the organic search, which is the first thing. The fourth part is the referral. Now, suppose today if I bought a Nike shoe and I like it, what I will do is I will refer it to my friend, which is where it's called a referral. And what does this do? When I see the traffic, which are the key traffic sources for my product, it helps me in taking effective channel mix call that in which channel I should be spending how much of money to attract and gain public attention. The second very important metric is the conversion rate. Now suppose if I have 1000 visitors on my website, out of which 200 gets converted. So therefore, what is the conversion rate? The conversion rate for my website is 20%. In a general sense, if I have a 20% conversion rate, for the visitors who come to my website and ultimately get converted to buy the product, it's a damn good number to have. Generally, as a market, the trends over around four to five percent depends on the branding and the other parts of it as well. What does it what does it indicate? It indicates that my landing page is very effective. People come, they want to buy the product, and then get the product in their portfolio. The third and very important metric is the customer acquisition cost. The customer acquisition cost is for a company and how much money the company is spending to gain new customers. Now, when I tell gain new customers, I mean getting new customers who have come on the landing page or the website of the company and ultimately become or take the product off. Now, in this example, if I'm doing a 5,000 rupees spent 
on and I'm getting new customers, which is 50, what is my customer acquisition cost there for? It is rupees 100 per customer. What it helps me essentially is to find out how much dollar I'm spending to get a customer onboarded or become a permanent customer for me. It helps me in managing my marketing budget. So if the marketing budget is limited, what I need to do, or probably if I need to curtail a spend to ensure that my customer acquisition cost is not going beyond the budget. Now, another, another metric is the return on investment. This is a proper metric which is measured by the marketing teams and the finance teams on the floor. What they essentially do is they will measure it as a percentage of the campaign cost. Now, what is the campaign cost? Now, suppose if I am putting 5,000 rupee on a Google or a Facebook or an Instagram and the revenue it helps me generate is rupees 15,000, what is the ROI? The ROI is the proper profit against how much cost I've spent. So in this example, the ROI is 20%. So any place where my ROI is more than 200% is a good metric to have. What it also indicates is that what is my campaign profitability? If I'm spending 5,000 rupees, what is the amount of revenue I'm able to generate from my website or from my campaigns? Again, very important metric. All the campaigns or all the expenditures which is done on the digital marketing channels is taken and considered through ROI. If the ROI of a campaign is bad, it doesn't make sense to spend further money on the data marketing channel. Another metrics and another very important metric is the engagement metrics. Here, what the company do is they will check that how many likes, what is shares and what is the comments which is coming on their post. Now, if the social media post garners enough attention and the number of likes, shares or the comments is very high, what it reflects, it essentially reflects that the content is resonating with the audience. And what happens in turn? The people start becoming customers and therefore your customer acquisition cost goes down, the engagement metrics and the engagement rate for the product or for the company clearly goes up. So when a company in a day-to-day -day method measures this kind of uh, digital marketing metrics, what are the benefits there for? The benefits from a digital marketing thought process is the wider audience reach. I can accurately target my audience because I know that my audience is coming on which target or which uh, landing page. What is the product they're liking? I can get all the matrices from my website in terms of what is the traffic? What is the click rate? How many customers are engaging with me? And ultimately how many customers ended up paying and buying the product? It also helps me in doing an enhanced interactive interaction because I know the behavior of the customer now that, okay, my customer is more comfortable in buying an XYZ product. Therefore, I will enhance that product more to garner more traffic and attention. And in turn, that will help me to sell other products on the website. The larger thing is the cost efficiency. What we will do is make a digital marketing or a digital marketeer rather keeps on measuring the cost efficiency of the campaigns which one is running on their website or the promotional activities. And it helps in timely measurement of the cost and take an informed call when to stop the campaign or probably when to put more money on the campaign till the time my revenue is firing up. These metrics are measurable results. They give me a results which is measurable and accordingly the management can take informed decisions on that. Thank you. You can put your comments and you can put your queries in the description box below and I will get back to you at the earliest. Thank you.